streaming live now. It's a separate stream, knowing that it's not the normal meeting, but we're streaming live post-normal meeting. Can somebody hold it for me so that I can speak? Okay. So um, thanks for sticking around. And um, I appreciate what Long Beach John has to say, and I appreciate you um, letting me speak my piece here in front of my constituents. So there's a lot of friendly faces here and famous freedom fighters and um, very influential Occupy. former candidates and current occupiers and whatnot. And Bruce Margolin is here, who is not only a former congressional candidate, but also one of my attorneys. And it takes a village to represent um, a member of the media like myself, a girl with such a tiny mouth, but such a big, big voice. <laughs> so, my orthodontist can tell you I really do have a tiny mouth, actually, but what comes <laughs> out of it is just incredible. So, um, I want to take this moment to say a few words not about me for a second and not about my candidacy. And it's really short. Look how short. Okay? For somebody who couldn't be here tonight, who really, really, really would want to be here tonight, the leader of the human solution, who spends a lot of time in Long Beach, Joe Grumbine, he's currently unconstitutionally incarcerated for uh, what I would like to call bullshit. It's a bail revocal. And I don't really understand why, but you can find out more at the Human Solution what is even going on. And because I'm not an attorney, but there's so many attorneys here, I thought the best thing I could do was write a poem for Joe Grumbine and his um, unconstitutional time. One year ago to you know this, this time, I was just released for my first unconstitutional arrest. And my famous co-director, Shepard Ferry, has been unconstitutionally arrested about 19 times. But this was my first, and you never forget your first. <laughs> and it doesn't make it right. That's a nigger, right? <laughs> so, um, I also had two subsequent unconstitutional arrests in a 30-day period. So that's unusual, I think. And the third was an hour before I was to give a press conference on Joe Grumbine's unconstitutional trial. So some say there are no coincidences, and I would have to agree. Um, and I don't think it's a coincidence that one year later I'm free to speak, but Joe Grumbine is not. So with that in mind, I have this to say. You're out of jurisdiction. So I'm out of jurispatience with this type of jurisprudence. So let me change the cadence. I must slow it down for you and your buddies and their lives of thin blue. It's unfortunate for you and the Crips that it's my favorite color too. But mixed with red and with white, and you can't handle that fight. Once we rise up and unite, please, with all of our might, and I say this with delight, that will be history that no one will be able to rewrite. So power to the peaceful, I would like to make a plea for a ceasefire, not just between Israel and Palestine, but between all of the activists in the cannabis community. Please stop kibitzing with your bullshit and unite nobody, whether they're an asshole or rude or we don't like them. Nobody should be in jail for a plant. Can I get an M. Pam Hooray? So we need to focus on an unusual situation that we have before us. We are at a time in history unlike any other before. And instead of complaining 
about, since the normal meeting is adjourned and they didn't let me speak on public comment, I feel free to say that a lot of people have complained over the years that, the nor that normal hasn't done enough for the movement. And I would like to also cease fire on that and put it aside and submit that perhaps the good attorney members of normal have been so busy occupying the fucking courts with unconstitutional arrests and bogus bail revocals that they haven't had time to focus on the issue before us today, which is to deschedule cannabis today. There is a resolution before the United Nations. <coughs> December 5th through the 16th is the Right for Rights Week. Amnesty International is asking everyone to write letters on what they consider to be uh, injustice of human rights. We know, and I'm, you can check out the petition at change.org slash petitions slash prohibition is over. So it's easy to remember, and I don't have to take the time to tell it to you now, but it's based on some basic principles we all know, which is that prohibition is based on lies, that it has medical value, cannabis, hemp has medical value, and that the current head of the DEA is uh, a, a self-affirmed law enforcement agent who has received monies from asset forfeiture. So again, we call bullshit, we call rid of quo warranto, and let's let our attorneys and our normal members focus on the true work in front of us, California cannabis clemency, international cannabis clemency, pardons for everyone in jail for a plant and true safe access for everyone to treat themselves. Can I get a hey now? Hey now. Can I get a hemp hemp hooray? Hemp hemp hooray. So with that said, I'm Melissa White Chocolate Ballon. I am one of 14 declared candidates for mayor. And tonight we have before us, no, don't, please don't applaud. Please, <laughs> please. Or maybe I'll two candidates for city council, Chris Ash and Richard Eastman. It's my understanding that they're both running for District 13. Yes. So we want to applaud them for running in the name of Jack Harris. We said we should all register to vote, vote and run for office. But I also want to say I'm a little disappointed that uh, and relieved at the same time that I am not a registered voter in the 13th district. Because I see before me yet another challenge that we were faced with some of my favorite candidates in the world, Bruce Margolin and Steve Collette, running in the same district. So again, I ask for unity, and they can speak on the issues. I commend everybody for running on a pro-pot platform. I think that's very important. We're the only candidates that are doing that. And if, like Yuri Johnson, they don't include us in the debates, we will find a stage. Whether they give it to us or not, we will might check it. So thank you for giving me this opportunity for freedom of speech to share my views with you. You can find out about my candidacy, my views, my platform at Ballon for Mayor. That's on Twitter, it's on Facebook, it's on Meetup. And this is an unexpected tweet up and meet up, so I'm, I tweeted about it. I'm late for a very important date at Jeffrey Peterson's um, Two Buck Tuesdays with Fraser Smith at the John Lovitz Club, who is going to give me an opportunity officially to speak as a candidate, so that's why I didn't mean to interrupt you, Long Beach John, but thanks for squeezing me in, if you pardon the expression. And I hope that you will find other opportunities to talk to me about my views and my ideas. I also want to state very clearly, while my attorney is still present in the room, that right. the main reason that I'm running for office is not about whether I win or lose. It's about having the opportunity to bring these issues to the platform and also so that if God forbid anything should happen to me, that you know it was by the hands of the very bad Lieutenant Sheriff Mack at the Clara Shortridge Fultz Criminal Justice Center, and that he should get in way more trouble 
God forbid for an assassination of a political candidate than just a girl with a big mouth who he said didn't have a proper media pass and who was a transient. Not that there's anything wrong, as we know, hey, now, with being transient. And it's certainly not mutually exclusive with being a filmmaker in Hollywood. But that doesn't make it right. So thank you, and I'm Melissa Bell, and I approve this message. And you can call my attorney, Bruce Vargolin, at 1-800-420-LAWS. And you can call my bail bondsman, Little Zeke, if, uh, if you're looking for me. Tell my mom I love her. Empire Parade! <laughs> Coming up next, we have uh, two people that are running for city council in District 13. District 13 is Hollywood. That's right here. You're in District 13 right now. This is Hollywood. This is a very important district. We have two people running for uh, city council in the upcoming election that are pro-marijuana. We have Richard Eastman, and you all know Richard Eastman. Yeah, have them for me. Richard Eastman will be the second speaker coming right up, but first we have Chris Ash, who's also running for uh, District 13 City Council. Hands hands hooray! Hooray!